Combined, these professional crooks managed to scam over 1 trillion US dollars out of their victims. Before these huge scams became public, the perpetrators often enjoyed an extravagant luxury lifestyle in front of TV cameras and on top of magazine cover pages. You gotta know about these massive scams, especially the top 4 will blow your mind. Good day, kings. In this video, we present you with the top 10 biggest scams in history, ranked by the amount of money that was lost by the poor victims. It will be very interesting to find out how these criminals managed to live a luxurious life in front of cameras while they knew that everything was built on a lie. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to become an actual king. Trust me, it works. Okay, let's dive right in. Number 10. Even though the top total loss of 20 million US dollars caused by this scam pales in comparison to others, an informative video on this topic must include the famous Charles Ponzi, who lent his name for all subsequent Ponzi schemes. As a quick explanation, today a Ponzi scheme is a so-called pyramid system. This means that you only get money if other people put in their money. Back in the 1920s, Ponzi purchased postal coupons at a discount, shipped them abroad and sold them for the full price. He then started to exaggerate the financial benefits of this rather small business, promising a return of 50% within 45 days. Thousands of people fell for this and old investors were paid with the money invested by new investors. When everything blew up after roughly a year, investors lost a total of 20 million US dollars through this pyramid scheme, which is equal to 196 million dollars in 2019. Ponzi then fled the country and became financial advisor to Benito Mussolini, the Italian politician who founded and led the National Fascist Party. Even though this doesn't even come close to the biggest scams on the list, I have to admit that this was quite a career. Number 9 is the first and last woman on this list, Elizabeth Holmes and her healthcare company Theranos. This company was marketed as a breakthrough technology company, producing blood tests that require only a few drops of blood and analyze the blood within just a few minutes. 19 years old Elizabeth Holmes founded the company in 2003 and managed to quickly raise as much money as she wanted, resulting in a maximum valuation of 10 billion US dollars in 2014. An unbelievable 12 years after the company's foundation, its technology was questioned for the first time in 2015, leading to the bombshell reveal that the technology simply didn't exist at all. By 2016, Holmes's personal net worth dropped from 4.5 billion US dollars to basically nothing. In 2014, Holmes falsely claimed an annual revenue of 100 million dollars instead of the actual amount of 100,000 dollars. If you want to keep following this obscene case, the trial is scheduled to begin in March 2021. The brokerage firm MF Global, led by former Goldman Sachs chairman and former New Jersey senator John Corzine, gathered a total of 41 billion US dollars in assets before failing in 2011. When Corzine took over the futures broker and bond dealer, the company was already troubled. Corzine introduced a very bold strategy of risky trades, which seemingly worked out well, until it was found out that MF Global was in fact gambling with the money of its clients, which led to a total of 1.6 billion US dollars missing from client accounts. Being a very connected man, the former senator and governor of New Jersey of course managed to circumvent a prison sentence. Gambling with customer funds is a crime under the Commodity Exchange Act, stating that customer money must be strictly segregated from company funds. Bray X was a Canadian group of companies involved in mining. Michael de Guzman, geologist and employee of Bray X, claimed that the company had found gold in the jungles of Borneo, which is the third biggest island of the world located in Asia. During the 1990s, he produced thousands of core samples containing gold, catapulting the company's value from that of a penny stock to an incredible $6 billion empire. Eventually, the Indonesian government became suspicious and revoked 45% of Bray X's control of the mine in 1997. The crazy case began to unravel rapidly when de Guzman reportedly committed suicide by jumping from a helicopter. After conducting due diligence, only very small amounts of gold were found on the site 
Grey X finally went bankrupt in 2003, erasing a total of 3 billion US dollars from its investors. The large US telecommunications carrier Q West provided local service in 14 US states before merging with CenturyLink in 2011. Joseph Nakio was chairman of the board and CEO of the company from 1997 to 2002. After a series of accounting errors that boosted the company's stock value, Nakio was convicted of 19 counts of insider trading in QWest stock in 2007. His defense team claimed that the conviction was the punishment for his refusal to give customer data to the NSA in 2001. Nevertheless, Nakio was sentenced to six years prison, which he served until 2013. Besides Nakio, seven other former QWest executives were sued by the US SEC. All of them were accused of benefiting from an inflated stock price, in addition to the three billion that were lost by investors after the scam was discovered. Have you heard about this massive fraud that just happened this year? It is expected that around 15 billion US dollars were lost in this disaster. The German payments company Wirecard filed for bankruptcy earlier this year after disclosing that 2.3 billion dollars in its balance sheet simply did not exist. As a result, the company's share value plummeted from 105 euros on June 17th to just 1 euro 9 days later on June 26th and CEO Markus Braun was arrested. COO Jan Masalek has since disappeared and is still on the run. Sounds like the story of an action movie. The scandal cost its investors and creditors a total of 15 billion US dollars. Currently, Wirecard is being dismantled. Most of the assets from its main business unit have already been sold to Santander Bank for a mere 120 million dollars in November 2020. Just before the scandal, Wirecard was valued at a massive 22.5 billion euros. By the way, a similar thing happened in the US in 2001. As the scandal was even larger, I will tell you about it later in this video. You gotta know this name. New York money manager Bernard Madoff operated the largest Ponzi scheme in history and the largest financial fraud in US history. Madoff founded a penny stock brokerage in 1960 which grew into Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities. At its peak, the firm was one of the top firms on Wall Street. Madoff was a darling of New York's high society and his face was regularly seen on magazine covers. It was all based on a lie. In 2008, Madoff's sons told authorities that their father had confessed to them that the entire firm was just a massive Ponzi scheme, which he said he started in the early 1990s, though investigators believe it already began in the 80s or 70s. Anyway, Madoff had been sending fake balance statements to investors, making them think that their balances were legitimately rising. Whenever they wanted to withdraw money, he used other clients' money to pay out the requested funds. As a result, Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison, the maximum sentence allowed. In total, 4,800 investors were tricked out of an incredible 65 billion US dollars. It gets even worse. At the very latest, in 2001, people became suspicious of Madoff's success. As an example, it was discovered that for his strategy to be legitimate, Madoff would have had to buy more options on the Chicago Board Options Exchange than actually existed. Still, the warnings were ignored and the massive Ponzi scheme went on for another seven years. The legendary Enron scandal was an accounting scandal that became public in 2001. It also led to the dissolution of Arthur Anderson, which was one of the five largest audit and accountancy firms in the world. World. Enron was founded by Kenneth Lay and by 1992 it was the largest seller of natural gas in North America. Its complex financial statements were confusing to both shareholders and analysts. Also, some speculative business ventures proved disastrous, since all losses and bad businesses were illegally hidden through creative accounting tricks, it seemed as if everything Enron touched turned into gold. When the fraud became public in 2001, it wiped out an incredible 78 billion US dollars from investors. Before the downfall, Enron employed approximately 22,000 people and claimed revenues of nearly 101 billion in 2000. When the truth finally came out in 2001, the stock plummeted from 90 US dollars to just one dollar per share within a year, marking the bankruptcy of the energy company. 
Just one year after the tragic Enron scandal, the US was hit by another huge accounting scandal, the WorldCom scandal of 2002. At the time, WorldCom was the USA's second largest telephone company with $104 billion in assets on its books. The fraud was uncovered when the internal audit unit discovered over 3.8 billion of fraudulent balance sheet entries. WorldCom was forced to admit that it had overstated its assets by over 11 billion US dollars. Senior executives led by founder and CEO Bernard Ebers had orchestrated a scheme to inflate earnings in order to maintain the high stock price. When the cat came out of the bag, the stock price plunged from $64 per share to just $1 per share, marking a total loss of around $100 billion. As a result, Ebers was sentenced to 25 years in prison. And finally our number one, the savings and loan crisis. This was not just a scandal, this was a true crisis that hit 1,043 out of the 3,234 savings and loan associations in America, also called SNL, from 1986 to 1995. An SNL is a financial institution that accepts saving deposits and makes mortgage, car and other personal loans to individual customers. Key to the SNL crisis was a mismatch of regulations to market conditions, speculation and outright corruption and fraud. In 1979, the Federal Reserve of the United States raised the discount rate from 9.5% to 12% in order to reduce inflation. Unfortunately for most SNLs, they had issued long-term term loans at fixed interest rates that were lower than the interest rate at which they could borrow from the Federal Reserve. Subsequently, these SNLs could not attract adequate capital and went bankrupt. To make matters even worse, some SNLs took advantage of lax regulation oversight to pursue highly speculative investment strategies. One extreme example was Charles Keating, the head of the Lincoln Savings and Loan Association, participated in suspicious activities and, to make sure he won't get caught, made legal political contributions of about 1.3 million US dollars to five senators who became known as the Keating Five. After the case eventually reached the public in 1989, Lincoln's savings bankruptcy alone cost the federal government over 3 billion US dollars. Combined with the other roughly 1,000 SNLs that went bankrupt, this entire crisis cost the government a total of 160 billion US dollars. The huge reach of this crisis definitely hit the US very hard and is considered the most catastrophic collapse of the banking industry since the Great Depression of the 1920s. Until the very end, Lincoln Savings former head Keating blamed government regulators for the failure of his firm. Still, eventually he served prison time before dying at the age of 90 in 2014. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to become an actual king. Trust me, it works. Also, let us let us know in the comments which of these scandals you already knew about. Especially the Bernie Madoff case is crazy, right? Over several decades he was respected as one of the most successful bankers on Wall Street, even though everything was based on a lie.